Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Solace, and with me, as always, is my very, very, very talented friend, who is a true superstar, the mixtress DC Gina. Hi, Louise. Hello, love. I mean... Superstar. I mean, that's pretty funny. You like, like that? It. I'll take it in 2024, yes. Okay. Somebody call me a superstar, please. And my <laughs> kids tell me I don't know anything. <laughs> Well, we're just going to get all starstruck on this episode. I'm you ready? It. Yes. All right. Yes. So we know the night sky can be a wondrous place. And on a clear night, it's filled with stars. But there are some celestial lights that shine brighter than others, right? So, and there's a key factor that makes it so. And that's the star's temperature. Hot stars tend to produce more light than cooler ones. And here's something, a little twist on this. Blue stars are the hottest, followed by white, yellow, and orange, and then there's red stars, and they are the coolest. In temperature, not in coolest, but maybe too. Uh, but which brings me to Sirius, uh, which is the brightest star I'm in the serious. night sky. I know, I'm serious but serious. Um, it's the brightest star in the night sky, and sometimes the brightest object of them all. And the reason you say object, because the moon and the planets Jupiter, Venus, and Mars, and occasionally Mercury, um, can sometimes be bright enough to outshine, outshine, <laughs> outshine Sirius. That's hard to say with no cocktail. Uh, <laughs> I know, keep me dry in January. <laughs> and, and even um, the International Space Station, um, during the brief times that it whizzes over by overhead, um, it can sometimes appear brighter too. So, it's not always the bright. It, it is the brightest star, but not always the brightest thing object. So, uh, speaking of all the these bright and shiny objects that mesmerize us, brings me to today's designated drinker. Don't look so confused. I'm getting there. She, a woman like you, Gina, um, I instantly wanted to be my friend. Um, she is the chief marketing officer of Nearest Green Distillery. She is none other than Brielle Caruso. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Brielle. Thank you so much, ladies. It's so good to be back. It is. See, bright and shiny. I know. She always is. <laughs> and so are you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm like, she's the she's lights just bouncing off of each other. There you yeah. go. I was just like, star, star, star. I'm like, what is I'm starstruck? I'm like, I right at the beginning. I was you ready for you to be like, Brielle sold it to, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Blake Lively. I don't know. No, I'm joking. Yeah, there you go. No, never, right? No, no, no. She's no, just, no. She's just a bright, sh shiny I love, star. I love that you're here. What's <laughs> going on? What's new? I'm ready. What's what's up? What's, what's going on with the, everybody? I want to know. Yeah. Do your thing. Let's do it. Do your page magic, yeah. Louise. I want to know what she's been doing. <laughs> so um, but before we do all that, um, let's tell everyone um, Nearest Green Distillery. What are we talking about? Yes. So it's the home of the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, Nearest Green, and it happens to be the number seven most visited distillery in the world. We got that title last year in 2023. So that's a pretty big deal when you think of all the thousands of distilleries that are out there. Yeah. It's amazing, actually. That's so yes. great. I mean, but you've seen Uncle Nearest everywhere. You explode it. Like, it's everywhere. It's great. It's amazing. The story's out there. People know it. Like, it's, you know, younger people call. Even in my bar. I have my Uncle Nearest in my bar. People call for it. Yeah. and then That is a huge kudos. Most people don't do that. Like, brands come and they sit for a long, long time before, like, they mm -hmm. are called for. Yeah. I, I know that, like, it seems so, like, oh, but that's what people do. No, they don't. They drink well, it's because of amazing people yes. that are chief marketing yes. officers at, at uh, Nearest Green Distillery make this happen. Make it, <laughs> make it. <laughs> I mean, we have it in the bar at last call. Like, it does really well there. And it's, like, literally called for by, like, yeah. everybody. So, sorry, go ahead. That makes me so happy to hear that. I would actually say our three secret weapons are, one, it's our story because it's a real story. And every brand does have to start with a story, but a lot are fabricated. And there's nothing wrong with that, but they just don't have heritage or they don't have a past that they can resurrect, right, to speak about what the brand is about. We did, and what was unique about our story is that it, it wasn't told for many, many years. Yeah. And Fawn Weaver, the CEO of Uncle Nearest, she had the ability to uncover it and do it in, in such a way that people really respected the journey of her finding out all of those details and, and facts from the past and unearthing it. I think the second thing about our brand that's so unique is we don't build to sell. 
And that's not knocking any brand that wants to sell. Everybody has a different purpose, right? But our brand is built to last for generations. So you do, you will build things differently. It's like when people are building rentals versus building a house, you put different types of appliances in, right? You take different care to make sure that it's going to last for the long haul. And I think the third thing is we have the best team in the industry. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm on that team. I'm saying it because even my, my colleagues in the industry and other industries are like, God, how do I get a job at Uncle Mirrors? You guys really care about each other. And we really do. And I think you can feel that and see that, especially when consumers are reaching into our brand, learning about our brand. They can feel the love that we have internally and that extends outwards. And I think that's why people are so into, into the brand now. That's awesome. That awesome. It must be, it must make uh, no, going cool. to work uh, getting easy for you every day. It is. It is. I mean, people say, right, you should do what you love. And I'm, I'm one of the very lucky few that feel that way because we work more. We work more than we do anything else in our lives. Yeah. Probably like 80%. I mean, I have a family. I have a son. I have a five-year-old. He's five now. Can you believe wow. it? Wow. <laughs> I better love what I'm doing if that's going to take me away from that little five-year-old cutie every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> that's awesome. So how? Um, so the last time you were here, you were with another brand. Um, yes. So how did you make that move? What was it that really um, like propelled you into this new space? I think growth. And the truth is, I think the leadership at Uncle Nearest. I've never met anyone like Fawn or Keith Weaver. They both are such visionaries and they are good people. And, and what an honor to be able to work with good people. You yeah. know, I think in every industry you find, you find some rough folks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and it burns you out. This industry can certainly burn you out. It's a lot of hours. People think, oh, you guys have so much fun. You work for liquor. You probably party all the time. It's day and night. I'm sure you both can attest. Gina, you're in a bar. Like, you know this. Yes. It's just, it's nonstop. Because even when you're off, and I say that with air quotes, off and you're walking into a bar or restaurant, you're looking right at the back bar to see yeah. what brands are there. You're immediately talking to the bartender, right, just to ask their opinion, see what brands they're offering up. So just being around people that care, that trust, um, and that motivate and inspire that's a pretty powerful thing. And obviously, if you're in a group of people like that, you, you can do unstoppable things. That's so cool. So how did you get into the, the spirit industry in the first place? By total accident, actually. I was um, out of my first, I, it was my first job out of college and it was healthcare PR because I always thought I wanted to go in PR. Um, I wound up in a healthcare role that did focus groups for colorectal cancer. <laughs> and that was a bit of a struggle, <laughs> as you can imagine. As a, as a young 20-year-old, I was like, oh, I don't think this is for me. And there's way too many regulations. This creativity can't get going. So I, I had a very early on in my career come to Jesus moment where I just said, what do you like to do? Like think there because I get very passionate. And if I don't do something that I love, I'm just going to not be interested. And <laughs> The, the sudden idea of, hey, Brielle, you really like to eat and drink. Voila, there's your answer. I'm like, well, what am I going to do with that? And um, I just so happened to apply for a job. It's a company that's still in business called the O Group. And they were an agency. They, they were the merchandising agency on retainer for Hennessy Cognac. And anyone in the spirit industry knows that Hennessy is owned by Moet Hennessy, mm -hmm. the big spirits conglomerate of all luxury brands under the LVMH umbrella. So I kind of went in through the back door because I started on the agency side. But within about eight or nine months, the SVP of Hennessy saw something in me and she recruited me over to Hennessy Brands. Oh, wow. And then I worked my way up within Moet Hennessy, which was an incredible experience for a 20 year old, for sure, working on brands of that caliber and then jumping around to more entrepreneurial brands, boomeranging back to Hennessy, working on the main brand Hennessy for, for quite some time and then venturing back into more entrepreneurial. So it's been a very, very fun career. That's awesome, that's awesome. I, in my notes, I really wanted to ask her about like how you have such a great career path, um, which can inspire many people no matter where they are, where they're taking their journey, but you've said it all. I don't even need to ask, I didn't even need to prompt you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so amazing, it's so great. Um, first of all, when you worked for Moat, did you get to go to France? Uh, many times, oh. many, many, many times. And like I said, selfishly for a young 20 year old, what an amazing experience. And I'll tell anybody that's listening to this podcast, 
a lot of people may think, oh, wine and spirits, right? It's a joke or, you know, you're just working on these brands and you guys are always going out and having fun. Yes, there's certainly a piece of that, but you learn so much about hospitality, about entertainment, right? It's the intersection of both of those and luxury, which I think is so fascinating. But also you get to experience things through these brands that some normal folks will never experience in their life. I've been afforded so many amazing travel opportunities and access, access to some of the most amazing events of my life because I got to work on those brands. So it's been very exciting, very educational. Um, and it certainly helped me in the more entrepreneurial brands to bring things like that to life, but in a smaller budget. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in a very different budget. Very different budget. <laughs> I'm sure, but we can I have those dreams. Um, I've never. I've only heard stories of um, the Hennessy team getting to go to Crush um, when they go to make the brandy for, and like how amazing it is. And then they do a blend, and they go blending. And I definitely want to do that sometime in my life. But we are not here to talk. Well, we're here to talk no. about Brianna. Well, we're actually, yeah. actually. I'm going to jump in there, Gina, not to like jump way ahead, but under the Uncle Nearest um, brands, we're creating a cognac and it's going to launch in 2025. Um, in 2023, the end of the year, we purchased Domain St. Martin, which is the Martell family's former estate now because yeah. we own it and we're building our own. So maybe in 2025 or a couple of years after, whenever we get the distillery up and running over there, um, your dreams can come true. Uh I will hold you to that because I <laughs> wanted to do, I've done a lot of different things with wine. I've done Pisco. I've done like lots of different things that involve the grape, but I have never done cognac. And I, yeah, the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> well, we, would yes. we would love to be your first. I'm, I'm we a, would I'm love a, to be I'm your first. Date and I can carry very heavy things. So I'm like, I'm good. And if I'm you can good. hold out for another year and a half, probably, then <laughs> we yeah, can figure just, something out. It's for definitely sure. something. I, I've been, it's funny that um, we're, we're talking about cognac because. We were just doing our menus for the, for the winter, right? Our winter menu, which changes after the holidays. And when I was talking about, like, what, where's the cognac? Like, cognac's missing. It's just missing. All of a sudden, my entire bar is is is, uh, is, is um, bourbons, right? Yeah, just bourbon. Mm -hmm. And then tequila. And then there's and one vodka. Because no, nobody ever just calls for one vodka now. Yeah. Right? I can have 59 vodka, one vodka. That's <laughs> it. They only call for the one. And we all know the name of it. So, yep. anyway. And I'm like, where's the cognac? I, it's missing. Like, where's the winter drinks? Where's the, like, a, like a Solano? Like, where are these drinks? They're just gone. Mm -hmm. Like, bring, I, that's what you, like, so, I, I love a good contrived cocktail. Like, where you just you know, put it all in. It's just this big and is that Is that how you do that? Yes. Is that how I, you do that? I conjure it. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm looking, but, but like, I, there is something beautiful about, like, you know, a sidecar, right? Or yeah. Or mm -hmm. just sipping cognac, or warming the brandy glass and then putting in the cognac. Like I, there is a ritual to it that is gone. And yeah. um, apparently, I want to work for this brand, so that's great. So <laughs> I'll, uh, apparently, I would like to apply for the brand, uh, the brand ambassador job for this. But like, I think there's like a there's a um, and now I, should I say this because I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble, but I'm gonna say it anyway. There's a sex to it that's gone. And like yeah. the drinking world has become so um, like not sexy, it's ridiculous. Well, is it? Do you think too? Maybe because um, that it's everything ha it is um, almost too structured. Like everything's got to be less than a hundred calories. It's got to be no. That's your that's your demographic. The demographic. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah, that, yeah, that's why yeah, it's losing yeah. the sex yeah, to it yeah. because it's not yeah. like. As I wish it were my demographic. You remember, I'm older than you, Gina. No, uh. I know. I'm just saying. That, all right, are you ready? So like, <laughs> this is what I think. I think. I think that the late 30s to uh, she's called me late 30s. Late 30s to the 50s, right? Ish, are all very concerned with how many how many how many can I have? Because mm -hmm. I really want to get fucked up. How many can I have? To say in this calorie yeah. thing, right? Because I don't actually want to like get on the treadmill. I want to just do this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then you have this. So now you've taught this generation of the 20, older 20 somethings yeah. to drink this weird shit. So yeah. like, boom, seltzers just took over the world because they don't actually like the what you're drinking. They want this like yeah. little sweet, little seltzery planet that they're living in, right? Yeah. And what's happening is that seltzers are kind of like, you know, 
what abs? Well, I, you know, they have their they had their day. They're just what abs. Like I like them. I love ranch water. I've always loved that drink before it became a canned drink. Yeah. Right? Now that's living here. And now there is this young group of let's see Alex's age, right? That has would never walk into a bar and go, Oh my God, I've never tried that VSOP. Let me try that. You know? <laughs> they would never do it. Because they're like, no one's taught them yeah. for the last mm -hmm. 30 years that this yep. is something that you do. Or that you have a martini before dinner, or you, mm -hmm. or you dine specifically, or you have an experience that doesn't involve you doing this. Yeah. Because you yeah. took a picture. Which, this is the phone. And, yeah. Sorry, this is the phone. Mm -hmm. And you're staring yeah. at your phone, and you're taking a picture of the extravagant drink that you just got because the gram, the Instagram, needed to be fed first, and now you think that that's drinking, and it's not. Yeah. And I think that the sophistication and the sex of it is gone. So well, the really great thing is you have these things called tips and tricks. Yeah. And you're teaching. You're, teaching you're bringing sex. the sexy back, Gina. I'm going to bring it. That's it. 2024. No. Yes. There's a thing. Even bars are sterile. They're white and yeah. paneled. What kind of fucking bar? Mm -hmm. this, like, you got to have a little grid in there. No, you have to have like a place where you meet other people. Otherwise, yep. you're going to only meet them on your phone. Well, that's really what's happening. So the good news but is... I own a bar that people... But here's the good things: nice. You do tips and tricks, yeah. and we put them on the gram. So let's go do one, and All maybe right, you can it. talk let's straight to those millennials. Go. All right, let's do it. Words I wasn't really sure I was ever going to say. I was like accustomed to saying, you know, microgreens. I was accustomed to saying micro cilantro, micro basil. But now the new thing to 2024, right, is um, mini herbs. So they're a little bit bigger, a little bit more flavor profile, a little more beautiful. This is sage, so lovely. Um, they're very tender, but a little bit more matured in the flavor. It's delicious. And they come living in the grocery store now. So you don't have to just, this is Thai basil. I mean, can you even look at this? It's so stunning. It's beautiful. Like all these little minis are falling, but like I just love how beautiful uh, this is. And the fragrance is just like perfume. What I love about them is that they're tender and they have a really beautiful, delicate, elegant um, flavor profile in the cocktails. They work so good. Am I gonna cook a stock pot of chicken noodle soup with this? No, I'm not. But am I gonna garnish my next cocktail with it? Absolutely. It's that thing that you were missing. Like sometimes you have like a sprig of rosemary in a drink and it like pokes you in the face and you're drinking it. This is so soft and malleable. It's like a baby, but like the flavor is so great and it's alive, right? So you can actually put it on your bar and keep it or put it together and, you know, use it as you want. But like, that's the new thing, right? So we're not gonna say, um, any more of the micro, it's the mini herb. So, cheers. Mini herbs, how damn cute are those? They are the cutest thing, but you know what's amazing about them is that they're being um, grown in these little hot houses, right, like I showed you, and they are so lovely because they add like, this perfume level to your food without like overwhelming it and your cocktails and your everything, without overwhelming it with just that one yeah. flavor profile. So I feel like you're going to see a lot of this now. The mini herb, mini herb, twenty twenty. Is this where the Keebler Elves went to? <laughs> <laughs> are, in the, are they in the mini hot houses? Yeah. Mini, mini herbs. <laughs> oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Mini, yeah. <laughs> yeah all right, Gina, where are they going to go to get this tip? You're going to go to designatingdrinker.show for the tips, tricks, how to, how to shop for mini herbs. And then you can also um, catch us on the Instagram and you're making cocktails and all the tips. Do you have to use the, like, the little mini grocery cart too? Yes, then? like I did on Guy's Grocery Game. Yes, you hold a little <laughs> mini cart. Yes. Yes. All right, so if you yes. didn't catch what Gina just said, um, she's, you're going to go to designateddrinker.show, or you can just scroll down into our episode notes, and you'll get links to designateddrinker.show or to our Instagram. No problem. They're starting our seventh season, so there are tons and tons of stuff there for you. And your little tiny mini herbs uh, <laughs> and our little keeper little elves um, bring us to the end <laughs> of part one with Designate Drinker, Marketing Officer of Nearest Green Distillery, our friend Brielle. But if you're anything like me or Gina or Brielle, 
What is it, Gina? One round is just never enough. Never. Never. Um, so go top off your drink and get ready for part two of this episode as we continue our boozy banter and Gina's gonna share her Brielle-inspired cocktail recipe that will make us all wish upon a star. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a Latino-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, we craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And while you're there, please don't forget to follow, download, and review the shows. Your reviews help our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.